Hello, Damon Mercy Solutions, and today we're going to take a look at installing SigWin onto Windows 11. Now, the reason for using SigWin is it can be used to access block devices that are natively attached to the Windows 11 host, whereas if we're using the Windows Linux subsystem 2 or 1, it's not possible to directly access those uh, block devices as a block device. So let's um, jump into it and we'll get this installed and take a look at how it runs. Okay, so to install, we first of all go to sigwin.com. We can go to the install tab here on the left. And more than likely, you're gonna need the 64-bit version of Windows. Um, we can actually do an about. If you're doing a bite on the machine, you'll be able to see which process you've got and how much RAM you've got installed and whether it's a 64-bit type operating system for two bits. In general, um, if you've got over three gigs of RAM, you're more than likely gonna have a 64-bit operating system. Uh, but here you'll be able to see on the system type. So once we know which type we want, what we'll basically do is to download the link. So I'm gonna save this link as and we'll just save this to downloads. This is downloaded. It's downloaded, we'll then open the installer. And we'll say yes to allow this to run. And first click on next. And we can then download from the internet to install. We'll choose the directory to where everything's going to be installed to. And for all users in this case, this would be where the actual packages that get downloaded to would be downloaded to and stored. And we'll let this automatically um, detect the internet connection. So in this case, I'm gonna choose HTTP and just mirrors 163 URL. Do us allow this to run. You can see what this has now done is downloaded the source list and what we have in here is a list of all of the applications or Linux or GUN utilities we're used to running. So as I'm going to use this with a tape drive, there's a couple of additional utilities that I want to add that aren't normally included. So what I can do here is just run a quick search. So in here I'm going to use MT and I know this is under the utilities. You can see by default it's skipped here. So I'm going to actually change this and we'll install the latest release there. And I'm also going to put in DD Rescue. Again, this is skipped. And we will include the latest version of DD Rescue. And I think we will also put CP, CPIL. Again, these are for use with tape drives. Um, so what I've done there is choose some additional uh, utilities. And what we can do here, I'm just going to do clear. And we can show a complete list here. And you can actually browse the various utilities that are in here, which ones are going to be installed. Um, and you can have a look at what utilities are actually available. So once you've chosen the utilities over the additional to install, you can click next. And then from here, let this run through. And this will download and install the utilities. Okay, so we can see this is complete. We can choose to add this on the desktop and if we want also to the start menu. And we'll click finish. And we close the web browser. So what we can see now is on the desktop here, we've got an icon. If I double click this, this launches into a shell. In the shell here then we can actually see the various uh, utilities and under here we can run various commands such as ls and pwd. You can see the various utilities. Now, so at the start of the video, one of the main reasons for using this is we can access block devices natively. So let me just show you the command here. If we run this command, just paste this command in. So if we run this 4f in dev s star, um, and then we can echo and enumerate the sigwin path. Let me run this. So what we can actually see on here is we're enumerating the various hard disks 
and we've got the physical Windows appliance name or the device. So in this case, um, my main reason for using this is we've got um, Dev ST0 and ST1 where we've got tape zero and tape one. Which if I go to the Windows 11 device manager here, we can see I've got a um, Quantum iScaler i3 tape layer reattached with a couple of LTO drives. And if I do a properties on the LTO drive here, we can see this is tape one. And we can now actually access tape one here natively in the uh, terminal. So if I was to type MT, Slash f and slash dev slash st1 and we can do an inquiry okay so permission denied okay let me restart this with admin rights so if i run this up as an administrator we should then be able to run the status command now so we can actually see that we have the drive and we can query the status of it. Now, one thing that doesn't work with SQLIN is the MTX command. So I've got a slight problem with loading media using the robotic library into one of these drives. However, we can under Windows load the MTX command. So we can use a Windows uh, PowerShell or a command prompt to load tapes into the drives and then use SIGWIN to read and write with TAR, DD or CPIO. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you have, please like and share. Um, and what we will do, I will leave a link at the end of the video to uh, how to install MTX. So we can actually take a look at that and setting that up on there to be able to control the library as well. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. You should be finding a link on the right here on how to install MTX. Please consider subscribing, liking and commenting below. And in future episodes, we will show more about how to use these commands and control various tape drives and tape utilities.